previously on Chaser. Kabir. Chaser. I am so very happy to meet you in person, Mr. Chaser. When we get through, you'll join us, taking the wet road. My people frequently use it if they want to get to the docks unobserved. I know where the guy is who finished off Valero. You know where Chase is? Get everybody you can carry a weapon and come with me. <laughs> it's Chase. Guys from Mars? I don't think so. They look more like your family. I had rather hoped that with the annoying Mr. Valero dead, they would stay away. Dead? Do not tell me that you do not know about it. Word has spread throughout MC that it was you who ended his pathetic life. I would like to know whether this is your typical method of parting with old friends. I have no old friends. Where are you now? We are in the old warehouse in front of the harbor gate. Hmm. Family members are all around. It doesn't look safe. Wait there until I open the gate from inside. Leave it to me. Over. As you say, resolve the problems with the family by yourself. Hello and welcome back. And with that little dip in the water, we are now here at New Harbor, where we are just one step away from getting off this continent. The main gist of this level is to get inside the port itself and open the outer gates so that Kabir can drive his truck in and we can get on our way. Exactly how we're going to do that, it doesn't make itself clear, but I'm guessing Kabir's got something up his sleeve. As you might expect, the family is waiting for us, and in fact they uh, seem to have seen us before we've even seen them. Uh, so it's just a case of using our sniper, a terrible sniper rifle, to clear up some of these guys. And unfortunately taking a shot in the head, which pretty much just halves all the health and armor that we've got. It's a bit of a sneaky trick to pull right at the very start, but well, that's, that's the game we're playing. It also doesn't help that this sniper guy actually takes two shots, where everyone else takes just one. It's um, certainly a departure from the norm, and it's uh, a bit of a dirty trick. Over in the distance we can see a very large building which we will not be visiting. In fact the areas that we will be sticking to tend to mostly be underground and um, kind of just on the other side of the wall in front of us but we'll, uh, we'll see more about that later. This building is our first stop, we can't get through the, the secondary gate so we have to come in here and contend with some haunted doors. placement markers for the AI whenever the level was created have just been placed too close to the door so um, when they're standing idle they're close enough to just kind of trigger the doors constantly and the AI isn't really all that clever so it doesn't think to kind of go through the door or move out of the way. If you hadn't noticed before in some of the previous levels, whenever the enemy shoots, they don't actually shoot from the end of their guns, they fire from their their face. Um, it kind of um, it must be just for the sake of convenience whenever they were creating the enemies and having them track you down and that sort of thing, just using line of sight. And if you need more evidence, here it is here. The uh, the center of this um, this dead guy is right in the middle of his head, so it's since it's leaning on the uh, on the chair, the entire body is. It 
certainly not immediately obvious, but the way to go is through the windows. You have to take the time to actually properly make yourself a hole and shit out all the edges of the glass or else you'll, you'll not be able to get through and think that that's the way it's intended to be. But uh, just a little bit of time and there you go. you're not actually able to get back either so once you go through these windows that's that's kind of it I still find it amusing that I can stand on tiny lips of geometry Above the windows is a faded sign which says New Harbour. It's, um, it's I actually don't notice it here, but um, it is there. Um, we don't really get a good look at it because it's not something that stands out. This particular courtyard type area actually doesn't go anywhere. You can run all the way over to the other side of that crane and, and the other side of the docks area, but there's nothing there. There's just one door we can go through. Um, the rest of this is just fluff. It's, it's very nice fluff, but fluff nonetheless. Stop it! Now that we're inside, the sound of the waves finally goes away. Um, it's something you'll be able to notice now and then, and it is, it's very intrusive once you notice it, and you can't unnotice it. So if you hadn't noticed it before, well, enjoy. This level marks the end of the first story arc within Chaser. Um, we finally get rid of the family. Um, uh, more about that later on when we get to it. For a while we've been ducking and dodging and doing work for other people. Um, but well, after this we generally get things moving and actually start making some headway towards getting to Mars. All of the doors down below were closed off, so the roof is the only way to go. So we'll just make our way up here and take out a few guys. Pick up a sniper rifle from the guy that we killed earlier, which always comes in useful. sound like a broken record by the time this level is over but I got stuck on this a lot um, on the roof we've um, kind of got another dead end it's only when you kind of run out of places to go that you think to look back and uh, go in above the building that you were in at the very start before that we're just gonna run back and pick up some health and then we can carry on Again, here we have the sign with New Harbour on it. Um, you can just about make out the end of Harbour, but it's a bit of a trial to read. The 
made a point of looking at this ventilation shaft um, out that little hole is the bathroom which was the first door we went into inside the building and this goes through um, alongside all of the, the rooms so we'll just make our way along that door takes us back to the place where we picked up that health kit so there's really no need to go through. So back and down the stairs we go. I can see you! Ah! This marks the beginning of the underground section of the level and we dip in and out of it several times um, but it mostly just looks like this. It's very fancy looking corridors for apparently no particular reason. I don't see why they should be all dressed up like this, but they are. And when we go through this door, uh, keep an eye at the very f back for some uh, instantly appearing enemies. This door appears to lead nowhere, um, so back out and in here we've got another storeroom where we've got a bunch of things we can pick up but we'll come back to that in a second. Before we do we've got um, a very special door which caused a lot of trouble the first time I played through this. Try to keep in mind the surroundings of the door and imagine seeing it from the other side. We'll get to that eventually but it's something that irritated the hell out of me whenever it happened. As usual we've got some health and ammo and armour, uh, since that's all you can really pick up in this game. Again, the ammo I have no idea what it's for, I'm just kind of picking it up and hoping that my numbers go up. It's also a little annoying that you can't easily pick some things up um, just because they're set a bit too far back on the shelf. It's not quite so much of a problem here but it does in later levels where it's just the only way to actually pick anything up is to, to make use of the use key in it. It's annoying to have to go to that step and you can just push it forward a little bit and pick it up automatically but well there you are. This giant cylinder room um, has two exits, one of which is locked. Uh, we'll be able to open that from the other side eventually. And the other door takes us to the second outdoor area where the target of our operation is uh, nicely docked. <laughs> If I appear to be hugging this wall, um, there's a very good reason for that, which we will see right now. That first guy with the grenade launcher will pretty much rock your shit up if you let him get off that shot. And since he does so when um, uh, the instant he sees you, there's really not much you can do about it. Um, you just have to kind of take it on the chin and pop him in the head and then take out his, his teammate over there. On the other side of this giant door is the other docking area, which is perpendicular to this one. Um, and inside you can see a submarine, which is what we're here for. I'm being particularly cautious around this area, there's a, a lot of scope for um, ambushes and things from guys behind giant containers and on walkways and things like that, as you'll see. And we end up coming back here at a later point where it's even more dangerous, but we'll see about that when we get there.
inside this little station is where we need to go. This is the um, the door control area, and this is what we need to be um, fiddling with to open the door for Kabir. Kabir, the gate control isn't working. It can't be opened from here. It works, but there isn't enough energy to open the gate. You must find the generators and increase their output. I will tell you how when you get there. Very odd for um, a doorway system to actually give you step-by-step -step processes of um, other auxiliary systems in a, in a complex like this, but there you are. At least um, it's something you can at least come back to if you uh, if you weren't paying attention to Kabir or the the mission goals are a little bit unclear. This direction is the incorrect way to go, but at least we can um, explore it and maybe pick up a few things. Drop your weapons. last catwalk area has always confused me. You can only get here from a ladder. It seems very strange. I'm not doing so well on health here. I really need to find a health pickup. Stop and finding those two guys doesn't help. This is the area above us where the guy with the, the grenade launcher uh, was attacking us from. We can't get up here via this ladder and we'll see that we can't actually get um, get to it in any way whatsoever and it's frustrating. While I was in the process of recording this level, um, I, I noticed a little glitch in the, uh, in the textures of these doors. If you just kind of wobble around you can see that the UVs shift ever so slightly as you turn. It ends up being something that um, I, I look for on all of the doors for, throughout the rest of the level. Now this is a room you could probably miss if you didn't take this direction. It gives you an opportunity to refuel on health and armor which is which is a must and we will end up coming back here again at one point as as you can see there's there's two lots of health and armor. So um, we can we can afford to just take one set for now and come back later on. It is, as I said, a, a room you could easily miss both now and the next time that you come across it. But you'll see how um, how useful it ends up being. <laughs> Fuck that ladder! It's really pissing me off. But at least they took the um, the time to to create a way, a, well, a feasible way for those guys to have gone up there in the first place, and not just kind of hanging out and maybe wondering, well, if, how did they get up there if I can't get up there? Of course, it's very possible that I'm per the only person who thinks that way. See right in the corner was a lift and uh, we take that once again down into the underground area. I do like this room a lot. I think it's it's fairly well lit. I like the the, the cool blue color scheme of it. It's very nice. I'm not willing to deal with, so we'll just retreat and use the level design to our advantage. And also know that the sliding door uh, will close behind us and we can open it, so uh, kind of preempt that and get back through it as quickly as I can. Use 
using this grenade launcher is fairly satisfying for me, um, uh, at least doing the reload animation, it reminds me of uh, Terminator 2. Here is an example of the timed grenades in action. And that's enough of that crap, let's go back to the impact. It's a very nice looking ceiling, but anyway, um, over here to the right is the other side of that locked door that I told you to keep in mind. And if you pay close attention you can see that the door is locked close by a plank of wood, and um, I completely missed this uh, the first time I played this level, and I must have wandered back and forwards for at least half an hour just trying to figure out where the fuck I was supposed to go. It's an, a horrible, horrible bit of game design, but um, here it is. moment it's just an exercise in getting round to the other side of that door again and luckily carrying on the way we came gives us a shortcut there. I guess that's useful since we can't actually backtrack at all and um, so it kind of works out in the end. It's going through this room for the second time that shows me that someone had a had an idea of just trying to jog the player's memory as to where they now were and that they've been there before um, by just removing that grating on the floor. It just makes you think, ah, yes, this place, um, very, very quickly, and it's, it's, um, it's good. we've entered into here is a four level vertical section and we're on the top floor at the moment. Outside this window is the uh, area where the grenade launcher guy was that we couldn't get to and we still can't get out but it uh, doesn't stop me trying. Basically what we need to do is to make our way down to the bottom. A little bit of dodgy light mapping here. You can see it every now and then it's just on more bland textures like that where it comes a uh, becomes immediately obvious. Very lucky to get out of this one alive, even though it did take nine tries. Kabir, I'm at the generators. What now? Don't let him get away! First, increase the fuel input by means of the two valves. Those valves we'll get to soon enough. Um, I think that triggers a little bit too early. It really should trigger um, once we get around that corner and away. This room we can't get out of, none of the doors open. Those doors actually lead directly out to the grenade launcher guy area. Um, and you'll see me fuck around here trying to jump out the window, but wasting everyone's time. Sorry about that, let's carry on.
the valves we need to turn are actually down on this floor underneath this gangway here. Eventually we'll get around to them, you can see what I mean by the, the voice clip triggering early. Got it. The fuel is running. Now, switch the burners to a higher flame. But you must switch them in the right sequence, otherwise it will explode. No, Kabir, no it does not. Sorry to tell you that, but there will be no exploding furnaces. Sorry, but the game is a big fat liar. We're now on the ground floor of this structure and uh, you can obviously see that this is uh, the base of a furnace. Um, and around here we've got all the, uh, the alphabetically lettered furnaces and we just need to go around and actually activate them all. As you can see we, um, we try B first and nothing happens. If you try any of them out of order, nothing happens. You have to do them in alphabetical order because the game will just not recognize you doing it in any other order. It's the stupidest thing ever. They might as well have just made it so that you could um, do them in, in any order. But it, to be honest, it's probably a scripting issue with um, how the game works. Now, increase the output of the generators and return to the gate. Um, it's likely that they couldn't be arsed to uh, to actually write some code that would let them to have four separate switches be triggered independently of each other. Um, rather than having to do it the way they've got is where they're all kind of stacked on top of each other and rely on the other one to actually do the job. Uh, it's laziness. Fucking laziness. And it, it doesn't even blow up. And because I played this level before and I know that as soon as I hit the second switch um, something happens, um, I need to be prepared for it. So um, I'm going to not hit the switch and leg it all the way back here and pick up that health and armor that we left behind before and then peg it all the way back, flip the switch and then carry on. And I'll be glad that I did that because you cannot survive this without ample health and armor and you'll, you'll see why. Okay, now the job of getting more power for the main gate is done, we can just make our way back there. And luckily through this door we've got another shortcut to the underground area, which saves us a little bit of time. Last stop, Chaser Boy. You betrayed the family. Killed Valero. It's time to pay. So, you're the big chief now. The head of the family. I have some advice for you, Tommy. If there are even a few functioning brain cells in that big bald head of yours, you'll get out of here as fast as you can. You don't get it, Chaser. Your death will reinforce my new position. Everybody will see Valero's Avenger in me. The successor! I'm bleeding! Very yes, Tommy did shout, I'm bleeding. Um, he Tommy. always shouts something different from the, the catalogue of responses, but that one's particularly funny, because uh, <laughs> it makes it sound like he shot himself. 
Hey, basically we've got a boss fight, and it's it is a very hard one if you if you don't know what's kind of going on around you. You've got Tommy and a few guys on one side, and you've got those two guys we just killed, and at the far end you've got an armed crew of them just running around the corner. There's not a lot of places to hide, and you can't really make a break for these stairs and up. You, you do have to, if, if you want to not just camp in a corner and spam them with grenades, jump into the little main gate room. Should be more than obvious that the AI can't get through this door, so um, while they're just kind of hanging around there, um, I can tell you that if you just hit the main gate button right now, you will end the level, but I thought we'd... Um, we try and take care of Tommy and, and with a little more style than when we were killing the big dragon. We let's um, let's do something special. First thing to do is to get rid of all the guys that are around Tommy. Um, we can be killed pretty much with just one grenade since they're you know, they're all hanging around the door still. So we'll just take care of them. Um, run back to kind of lead Tommy out into the open. Here's just one of the attempts. Um, you can see here that I'm poking my head out trying to get Tommy to shoot two bursts and that pretty much takes up um, a full clip so you make him shoot once then twice and when you run out um, immediately after that he'll more than likely just immediately start reloading so you've got uh, time to do this. just destroy some glass in celebration and then we'll get the fuck out of Dodge. This uh, marks the end of America, we don't ever need to come back here again, we're off to colder climbs and uh, I guess I'll see you next time. My deepest thanks, for this you shall receive not only a flight to Mars, but a voyage around the entirety of this elemental shit galaxy should be designed. Next time on Chaser.